Hi everyone, so really important lesson to get to grips with this one. This one is going to give you a potential evaluative strand on many of your essays. They may well be micro, but there's a chance as well that this could offer you uh, an evaluative strand on your essays when it comes to macroeconomic policy intervention by the government as well. It is, of course, government failure. Let's take a look. So this is where government intervention to correct market failure creates inefficiency and misallocates resources. Uh, there's a number of reasons for uh, why this may actually occur. And in a nutshell, uh, the government is actually making things worse rather than better. OK, the first one is Richard Thaler, the Nobel winning uh, behavioural economist, has said the government's dirty secret is they do not know what actual implications uh, and what effects any of their policy decisions will actually have. So this is true in introducing sugar tax. Uh, this is true when it comes to fiscal policy or capital expenditure projects that the government is undertaking. It's also, of course, true when it comes to the Bank of England and cutting uh, interest rates. OK, so therefore, uh, we don't really know what sort of implications there might be in the economy from any of those types of interventions. Uh, there is imperfect information. OK, so the government may therefore get things wrong. Right, next up, distorted political incentives. Uh, sometimes politicians, uh, they, they can be uh, very, very keen on themselves. And uh, as a direct result of that, they can actually look for uh, so-called legacy projects, which are, uh, are really about leaving their own mark on the economy uh, and uh, just creating a big capital investment project, uh, which may not actually create that much of an impact on the wider economy. Uh, so there can be a number of reasons for this. It could also be perhaps due to successful lobbying and campaigning by various uh, pressure groups or even private sector companies on given uh, politicians which may actually incentivize them to behave in a particular way and therefore uh, intervene in the market in a given way. Okay, there's also a big, big cost in any government uh, government expenditure, whatever type of expenditure that it, that actually is, uh, and this is a cost of bureaucracy. If you think about this, when taxpayer uh, revenue is actually derived by the government, they then need to decide how that money should be spent, spent where where it should be allocated. Each of those different uh, decisions is likely to involve all sorts of arduous, time-consuming meetings, uh, which will, of course, be undertaken by bureaucrats. And uh, it's, in essence, therefore going to be highly inefficient because of the number of people that need to be employed to actually uh, reallocate uh, such, uh, such expenditure. OK, so there's various costs when it comes to bureaucracy. There's also the potential for un unintended consequences as well. Uh, and these, these really are uh, where intervention, interventions may actually lead to unexpected outcomes. Great example at the moment in China. Very sad example, of course, is where there is uh, currently millions of males who uh, really face the prospect of never having the uh, chance to actually find a wife because of the gender imbalance which has been created as a direct consequence of the one-child policy. Perhaps that, that very much was an unintended consequence. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really going to lead to uh, very negative social uh, implications. Okay, there's also the role for uh, moral hazard as well that uh, by the government's own behaviour, they may actually uh, create some sort of implicit guarantees that perhaps there's a safety net being provided for various areas. Uh, and that may encourage some people to behave recklessly. So let's take an example, perhaps if we go back to 2008, when uh, we saw a number of uh, UK banks nationalised, bailed out by the government. Uh, why did this happen? Well, of course, it was uh, partly about saving uh, taxpayers and the taxpayers' own deposits that were in the banks. But what message does that send uh, to the banking industry as a whole for future generations? Does that always mean that uh, in the next banking crisis, 
that the government will rush to bail out those banks or should they actually let some of those banks go bust? It's an interesting argument. Okay, so there, there really is the potential for uh, creating moral hazard. Uh, okay, finally, uh, let's take a look at uh, how you can possibly overcome uh, potential for government failure. So what sort of steps could you take? Well, you could set various targets uh, to actually achieve for uh, whatever uh, political department is actually undertaking any sort of project. Uh, it might also that you use a profit incentive when it comes to capital uh, investment projects. Uh, so wherever possible, if you can use that profit incentive, um, it may also incorporate the use of uh, private and public sector partnerships, perhaps, where you actually engage with the private sector and you get them on board. If they're on board, then, well, they're very good at making a profit and will therefore help support uh, any uh, public sector organisation to really strive for that aim as well, perhaps. Uh, the notion of competitive tendering, so when it comes to creating uh, any uh, capital investment, any new road, any new bridge, uh, and so on, that this should be opened out for tender amongst private companies, and it should be private companies that then actually build that given project. Uh, okay, and then finally, the use of private sector consultants as well, uh, so that the best minds from the private sector can also engage with public sector organisations to ensure that they really are being run as effectively and as efficiently as they possibly can be. Okay, uh, this uh, consultancy role may also um, form the uh, basis for research in particular areas, so in trying to understand what implications a cut in interest rates may have, what implications uh, a tax levied on uh, soft drinks may actually have, and so on. Okay, that's it, guys. Thanks a lot.